my text. Welcome to Union Congregational Church, a church in the United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We give thanks that you are with us today, no matter in these pews or online, whether today or throughout the week. Um, so I've got a couple of announcements and then maybe others uh, have some as well, uh, and you'll see some up on the um, up on the board there. So um, this coming Tuesday um, is, is election day, and um, I, knowing that this is a very um, emotionally charged um, election season, um, the church will be open to you. Um, if, you need, uh, if you need some time to, to uh, be with God or to process or to talk to me, um, I think the hours of that we said were 10 to 12 on Tuesday, but um, if, if you want to make an appointment with me for any reason to, to talk about any anxieties you may be feeling, uh, just please know that that's uh, here for you. <clears throat> and also, um, I am going to be out of the pulpit for the next two weeks, so um, this, uh, a week from right now, I will be at De Chola uh, leading uh, music and worship for the Youth Faith Formation Retreat, um, for, uh, and I'll be hanging out with middle and high schoolers, so that'll be a fun, fun time. Um, yeah. Um, and, um, and then the next week, um, I will be on vacation. I'm going to visit some seminary friends in Indianapolis. So uh, that'll, be a, that'll be a fun time, too. So uh, both of those Sundays, uh, 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 the Reverend John O'Donovan, uh, who we all know and love and appreciate, uh, is going to be leading worship. And, um, and we, we give thanks for his leadership. And... Um, and if you, uh, if you need anything uh, while I'm away, uh, you, can, you can contact him as well. Uh, does anybody else have any other announcements? Okay, then uh, let's share the peace of Christ with one another. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. Good morning. Good morning, women bases. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Lily. Hi, Chris. How are you? Good. I'm happy to be here finally. So, is this your weekend for the year? Is this your weekend? Well, it degrees. Oh, yeah, we are taking it. Yep, no, Someone's Don't be afraid to face first into the Arctic kid. Yeah. 
please join and stand me and join stand and join me in the call to worship. God of love, you give us life. Holy one, we love you. Jesus, Christ of God, you embody God's love for us. Loving one, we love you. Holy Spirit, Spirit of love, you fill our hearts. Radiant one, we love you. Fill our hearts, transform our minds, make us vessels of your love. Amen. Please join me in the opening prayer. Jesus, Jesus, our teacher, you were feared, feared by those in power because you threatened the social order. You shook up notions of who was worthy of love. May our love be as courageous and radical as yours. May we never pass a stranger in a ditch, thinking they do not belong to us. May we reach back into our traditions to reclaim ways of being tender with each other. May we crack wide our creativity in what care for one another can look like. May we be unswayed by the clamor of those trying to conceive all is lost. May we put ourselves on the line for each other. May dogged compassion and scrappy hope be our guides. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now comes the time for any young worshipers who are with us to come and join me up on the steps. Anybody here? Yeah, we got a couple. Come on up. Good morning, everybody. How is everybody today? Good? Good. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Becky's gone, so you get me today. Um, <laughs> so, um, so, if I talk to you about the, the Ten Commandments, is that, um, have, have you ever heard of the Ten Commandments before? Yeah? Here's the big question. Can you tell me what any of them are? No? <laughs> yeah. Um, adults, you can help me too. Sh uh, shout out if there's, a, if there's one of the Ten Commandments that you know. You shall not steal. Yeah, Becca's got one. Love your neighbor. Covet nothing. Covet nothing. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Honor your parents. Yep, yeah. Yeah, good. So, uh, one, so that one day, uh, Jesus is talking to a whole bunch of people, and somebody comes up to him and says, what is the greatest commandment there is? What's the most important one? I'll give you a hint. It was said before. Somebody, said, somebody from the choir said it. So, what it is, is... Love God 
with everything you have, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So, so there are lots of people that, um, that are struggling right now in one way or the other. Uh, there are lots of folks that might not have uh, enough food. Um, there are, I mean, every, every one of you has enough to eat, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There are some, there are some times that not everybody has enough to eat. And all of you have a place to sleep at night, right? You have a nice warm bed to sleep in at the end of the day, right? Not everybody has that. And one of the, one of the reasons that um, our missions committee is helping out is that we are, uh, we are sponsoring um, Sleep in Heavenly Peace, which uh, helps other, um, other kids in this, um, in this community and beyond uh, make sure that they, uh, they don't have to sleep on the floor and they can have a nice bed to sleep in like you and I do. Um, and, um, and so um, those are kinds of ways that we can love our neighbor. What other ways do you think we can love our neighbor? Help them with their lawn. Help them with their lawn. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Any other thoughts? Pick up their toys. Yeah, if they if they leave toys in their yard, yeah, make sure that they. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are do do you think that your parents are your neighbors sometimes? Yeah, yeah. What what kind of ways can you show your parents that you love them? By doing chores. Doing things when you're asked to do it, not the third time you're asked to do it. <laughs> or the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the sixth. Yeah, we can keep going. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a hunch that somebody might have experience with that. <laughs> just a... Just a hunch. But anyway, there are so many ways we can love our neighbors. And so Jesus, uh, Jesus reminds us that the most important thing we can do is to love God with everything we have and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Those are the two most important commandments that we can follow. And so, uh, so that's, that's, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to say a short prayer. And I invite you to uh, respond back to me. Dear God, thank you for teaching us how to love each other. Help us love you with everything we have. And help us love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And help us share your love Everywhere we go. go. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, everybody.
and new life. Righteous one, write your commandments on our hearts, not as a list of do's and don'ts, but as a vision of the people who can be, the lives we may live, and the world we may create. Write liberation of the oppressed, care and wholeness of those with unmet needs and revelation and understanding to those oblivious to the earth. And blaze on your law of love in our hearts, on our lips and in our journey. Transform us with your love so that we may reflect your love toward our neighbor and toward ourselves. Amen. Beloved, you are loved, and you have the power to choose love in every moment and every encounter. Love has the power to lift, to heal, and to change. Let holy love move the mountains before you and the valleys within you. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Today's scripture readings are from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 34. One of the legal experts heard their dispute and saw how well Jesus answered them. He came over and asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is Israel. Listen, our God is one, the one Lord, and you must love your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your being, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you will love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The legal expert said to him, Well said, teacher. You have truthfully said that God is one and there is no other besides him. And to love God with all the heart, a full understanding, and all of one's strengths, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more important than all the kinds of entirely burned offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered with wisdom, he said to him, You aren't far from God's kingdom. After that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. Here ends the readings for today. We learn from these holy words. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Becca. Uh, Our media song for today uh, comes from Tim McGraw. This is People Like Us. My friends, will you join me in prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts in this hour be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So this is one of those weeks that it's not very easy to preach. 
because there's a topic of great consequence on everybody's mind, but nobody wants me to talk about it. Of course, I'm talking about the fact that there's the election uh, on Tuesday, and I'm mindful that I asked a very important question to your search committee when we were interviewing. I said, what's the biggest preaching topic that will get me in trouble? (laughs) And everybody said almost at the same time, politics. So I know I'm walking a very thin line here, but my goal is to be very apolitical. I'm not going to talk about the two candidates for president or what I think about either of them, or especially who I think you should vote for, because I would like to keep my job. (laughs) And uh, because it's none of my business. You don't need me to tell you who to vote for. You've seen the campaign ads, right? You've seen too many campaign ads, am I right? Yep. Uh, And, uh, but I do know that there is, um, there is something that, um, that is, that is true for any pastor and for many pastors around this country. It's very difficult to preach the Sunday before an election it's very difficult to preach the Sunday after an election. Um, and um, and I, uh, I also want you to know that there, uh, I have a preaching colleague, um, I have a pastor colleague in, in Beaver Dam that I talk to every week, uh, and we compare notes about what each other's preaching on, and my sermons have gotten better uh, because of him in many ways. And... Um, and uh, I told him that I would not be preaching the next two weeks, and he said, you suck. (laughs) But I do think that today's gospel text has something important to tell us. Both of, both those of us who've already voted, I've already voted, and those of us, um, who, who haven't voted yet. Um, this is especially true because th- this particular election is so polarizing. Lots of us have ended up getting in uncomfortable conversations because of other people's views on one candidate or the other, and some people have been very hurt at times for what they feel are personal attacks. Like, oh, you are voting for them? I'm not sure we can be friends anymore. But if we read today's gospel text, we, uh, we remember that Jesus invites us to consider a different way forward. Love God with everything you have, and love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm going to talk about both of those things in turn and how they can be instructive to us as we live in this strange and divided world. And I am going to focus on the gospel text, I promise. I'm not going to beat the election to death. Just trust me on this one. So as the lectionary often does... We come to today's text in the middle of the story. There are many different situations in the previous uh, verses of the the 11th and 12th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, where legal experts are trying really hard to back Jesus into a corner and, and, and say, gotcha. He's told the parable about farmers in, uh, in a vineyard that painted the legal experts in a negative light. He's answered the famous question about taxes, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's, and then answered this really dense and really weird question about the resurrection. Uh, you couldn't possibly be interested in that. Even I looked at it and I was like, what the heck? Why are people asking Jesus this sort of thing? Uh, so so uh, Jesus is always one step ahead of them. But this time is different. 
One legal expert asks Jesus, what is the most important commandment? The commentator Sung Su Hong reminds us that uh, the very tone of this conversation is different. The scribe does not intend to test Jesus like the others have, but, but, uh, but holds what Hung describes as a positive conversation with Jesus. And Jesus says he answers correctly. So, of course, uh, when asked what the most important commandment is, Jesus speaks about two commandments that are similar. Is that cheating? I, I don't know. What? what the most important commandment is, and then he says there are two. I, I don't know. Um, the most important one is, our God is, um, is the one Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your being and with all your mind and with all your strength, he says. And for me, when we love God, we have to remember the people and things that are most important to God. For example, it is not the will of God that people here in Wapan and, any, and many other s- smaller communities in this country struggle to meet our basic needs, while others of us have more than what we need. Some people in this country have more money than they will ever know what to do with, and yet others don't have nearly enough. It's not the will of God that children continue to die from school shootings. That people are discriminated against for things about themselves that they cannot control. Or that Israel and Palestine and Ukraine and Russia are at war. If we defend the oppressors in these situations, then our beliefs are running counter to what God asks us to do. Instead, we are called to do what Jesus asks us to do instead. Love our neighbors as ourselves. Treat others with dignity, compassion, and understanding, just as we might expect people to treat us. There's one attribute about this congregation which I am thankful for, particularly right now. We know full well that we don't always agree on everything in this church. We have uh, church members from the full spectrum of political and ideological stances. But I'm thankful that we can sit next to each other at coffee hour, talking about the goings-on of our lives that are most important to us, families and grandkids and prayer requests when times are hard. You know how to love your neighbors well in this congregation. So how do we vote like that? How do we vote like that? How do we live like that? I ask you, I beg you, please don't stop now. No matter who wins this election, there will be difficult consequences and difficult days ahead. No matter who wins this election, there will be people who believe that their voices were not heard and that their, that their difficulties were not acknowledged by the winning candidate. No matter who wins this election, there will be reasons to fear for the safety of our country and our democracy, especially so over the next few months. But here's the point that I want to drive home today. No matter who wins this election and whose vision for the future of our country prevails, our call from Jesus remains the same. Love God with everything you have and love your neighbor as yourself. As Tim McGraw says to us in our media song, if we're willing, we can be building a tomorrow we can trust, but it's up to people like us. So as you move into this week, 
A week that will be difficult no matter what happens and no matter who wins. May you be ready to vote with love. Vote with love for God and love for your neighbors and love for all. No matter what happens after your ballot is cast, may you be ready to roll up your sleeves and get to work. May you be part of the healing this country needs and not the hurt that this world continues to experience. May you use the good gifts that God has given you joyfully for the betterment of all creation and all people everywhere. Because if we want things to change for the better, we can't rely on politicians to do that. We can't rely on uh, other people to do that. It really is up to us. So let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Thanks be to God. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Hmm. Now let's enter into a spirit of more intentional prayer. First, I'd invite us to take a moment in uh, silence for the people and situations that are on our hearts and need our prayers and our love today. Receive the prayers of our hearts, O oh God. Amen. We've got a couple of prayer requests that I've been given. Uh, for any of you who didn't know, uh, Sue Wiggins um, is recovering from surgery. Um, and uh, it's been a bit of a painful recovery, so... Um, so continued prayers for Sue and uh, for Bill as, um, as she recovers. God in your mercy. And of course, for our country, for its future, and for all of our leaders. God in your mercy. What other prayers do we bring today? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. There's one from the Zoomers. Okay. That say prayers for the Shanae's who are recovering from COVID. Indeed. Uh, prayers for Jane and Steve Shanae as they uh, recover from COVID. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Anything else? Nope. Okay. Then uh, let us join together in a spirit of prayer. God, in your grace and love, you bring us here from wherever we are, from whatever we believe, from wherever our anxieties lie. And you remind us of the most important commandment, which is a commandment to love you with everything we have and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Sometimes that love manifests through caring for the sick and those who are recovering 
for Sue, for Jane, for Steve. Sometimes that love manifests in loving uh, those in our community who are experiencing homelessness, poverty, food insecurity, and discrimination in all of its forms. Sometimes that love manifests in offering prayers for a hurting world. But sometimes that love manifests in action. Sometimes that love manifests in getting to work, rolling up our sleeves, for refusing to be apathetic. Because there are so many needs in this country. There are so many needs in our world. And we've got so much work to do if we want to heal the divisions that our country is experiencing. And it's up to all of us, not just some of us. And so with that spirit, may you empower us to love our neighbors as ourselves. May you empower us to not be in the silos. May you empower us to do everything we can with all of the gifts that you give to us. To continue to love each other in these challenging times. We ask all of these things in the name of your son Jesus who shows us the way of radical love and teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A word about our, um, about our offering music today. Um, I, I'm really excited because um, ever since I started here, Kathy Indermule and Janet Gale have wanted to uh, sing a song with me. Uh, and so the three of us um, are, are doing a song called Blessings by Laura Story. And uh, this, is a, um, this is a beautiful song about uh, the, the difficulties that um, our world is experiencing and um, the, the ways that um, blessings can come from uh, difficult situations. So uh, in that spirit, may we give generously, whether uh, through uh, putting your offering in the plate or giving online for uh, the betterment of uh, this church and this community. Please give generously as your heart and spirit invite you to give. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> we pray for blessings. We pray for peace. Comfort for family, protection, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear each spoken need. 
Yet love us way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. And we cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness. We doubt your love as if every promise from your word is not enough and all the while you hear each desperate plea and long that we'd have faith to believe because what if your blessings come through raindrops what if your healing comes through tears? And what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? When friends betray us, when darkness seems to win, we know that pain reminds this heart that this is not, this is not our home. It's not our home. Because what if your blessings come through? What if your healing comes through tears? And what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if my greatest disappointments or the aching of this life is a revealing of a greater thirst this world can satisfy? And what if trials of this life, the rain, the storms, the hardest nights, are your mercies in disguise? rise if it's comfortable for you to do so. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Great God, receive these gifts of love with blessing for those who give and those who receive. Magnify our ministries, enlarge our circles of care, and amplify our love in the world. Amen. You may be seated. Now we come into a time of sharing Holy Communion with one another. Um, for those of us who are at home on Zoom, this is also your chance to uh, grab your elements from your pantry so you can uh, join us. I apologize that I forgot to uh, remind you before, uh, but you've got some uh, liturgy 
that if you're still rushing around at home, you, can, you still have time to, to grab something to, to join us. And just as a reminder for all of us um, that this table does not belong to us. This table does not belong to, uni- to uh, Union Congregational Church. It certainly doesn't belong to me. It doesn't even belong to the denomination. But it belongs to Christ, who invites all of us to participate those of us who have been here before, those of us who uh, have not been here for a long time, whether we are members of this church or of this denomination or not, we are all invited to share in God's love for us. So let's join together. God is with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Holy One, our God. It is good and beautiful to give God our praise. Blessed are you, O God, creator of all things, ruler of the world and all that is to come. In the beginning was your word. Your word was love. And by your word you created all things. You have loved us into being, and you surround us with your love in all creation. Though we wander from your love, your love for us remains steadfast. You heal us, you restore us, you set us free. You overthrow the powers of evil and oppression, not with violence, but with love. In Christ, you have loved us with all your heart, mind, and strength. Blessed are all who come in your name. And blessed is Jesus, your Christ, who embodied your love. He gave us love so that we might love. He loved even those who were least loved among us. His love had the power to heal, the power to overcome injustice and and oppression. In this meal, with grateful joy, we feast upon your love given to us in Christ. On the night in which he gave himself to us, Jesus took bread and broke it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body. This is my love broken and given for you. Every time you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. And after they were finished eating, he took a cup, poured it out, and gave you thanks. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this. This is my love poured out for you. This is the cup of the new covenant given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As long as we break this bread and share this cup, we remember his death and resurrection until he comes again. Therefore, remembering these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, for ourselves as a living and holy sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup, that they might be for us the body and blood of Christ. Feed us with love that is bold and courageous, confident with tender hope, and the power that changes the world. By the power of your spirit and the love of Christ, make us the body of your love. Amen. As we share uh, the elements, uh, you, may, you may come forward um, uh, from, from where you are and uh, take a piece of bread and, um, and a cup. And uh, then when you're finished uh, eating and drinking, 
uh, you can place the cups back uh, where you found them. Uh, the, uh, the bread on either side contains gluten. The bread on, in the center is gluten-free. Uh, so the gifts of God are given for the people of God. Come, for all things are now ready. The love of Christ for you. Please join me in the prayer after communion. Gracious God, we thank you for the mystery that you give yourself to us. You have poured into us your love, that you, love that you may use them as vessels of your love, that above all else we may love, for to love our neighbors is to love you. So bless us in the name of Christ and the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> our closing hymn is number 595. They'll know we are Christians by our love. We'll be singing verses 1, 3, and 4. Please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so.
the benediction, I want to uh, remind you of uh, today's budget meeting uh, directly following this service. We are not going to be going and enjoying coffee and treats beforehand because we know that you won't come back. <laughs> so uh, so uh, I will give the benediction. Uh, Sue will play a little bit to transition us and then Madam Moderator and Madam uh, uh, Chair of Finance uh, will, be, uh, will be leading our meeting. So friends, receive these words of benediction. When love reigns, the world will change. Be the love that the world needs for the kingdom to become our beloved realm. Go in the reassurance that the God of love, who is love, is with you. And now may the love of God the grace of Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen.
You also need the microphone to be on. Not everybody on Zoom. Oh, okay, fine. Thanks, Alana. I think everybody's done. They're all settled. So I'm going to call this uh, 2024 budget meeting to order. I'm going to have Jacob come up and give us a little prayer to start us off. Pretty please. Indeed. Let us pray. Gracious God, 